Oh. Okay, wait, can I? Oh, shoot, my audio is. Hello? Alright. Um, yeah, today is a bit noisy because of the fan, because the weather is pretty good, so I'm not I'm just keeping my windows open. Anyway. Okay, let's do a quick session here. The goal today of uh, of this session right here is to check the correctness of my algorithm. And as well, I want to add a few things. Um, to come. Hmm, how do I do that? Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna. So the algorithm uh, basically tracks. I mean, well, the algorithm is to compute the kind of the motion of a particle and um, storing the the entire trajectory of the particle is very expensive. So I don't want to do that, and I'm not doing that now. But uh, in return. In return, I don't get a lot of information, so I need to find things to calculate. But if I do it in a loop fashion, it's gonna be very slow. I don't know what's the best way to do this here, actually. How to loop through something? Um, I guess you can scan it. Let me try it out. I, I'm. I'm uh, I'm not so sure how to write this. So I need to add the functionality as well as make sure that my code is correct. And if I have time within the next hour, I want to run a short experiment. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Let's just get going. My code big so you can see it, maybe. Changed a lot of code the last time just to test things out, so now the code is probably wrong. But so I gotta change it back.
honestly makes no difference because I'm jitting the outer layer. I don't wanna complicate things unnecessarily. Okay, 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 let's let's try. So I can cross check it with my previous code, yeah? Oh, that's such a pain. Such a pain. Such a pain in the ass.
first proposal.
So stupid, but I don't know what's the best way to do it though. Uh, so the idea is that when I have something to return, like the not likelihood, I want to track it, but otherwise, I don't want to track it. But I don't know how to put it in a JIT format. So after I have my position, I want to. It's not scalable on this code, but who really cares, right? I mean, ah, uh, yeah, who cares? So technically speaking, you shouldn't compute the... The train, right? Because... Because in computing the... Um... Okay, I'm gonna be a bit smarter about this. <coughs>
Yeah, yeah so I supply the prior so that if I want to get a negative of negative of the train set, I can just minus the prior, right? Yeah, that's fair. It's a little bit redundant, but uh, we can do that. <coughs> So actually I'm done with uh, adding the functionality. Now is the more tricky part. How do I know that all of this is correct? Now there's a few ways to go about this. Uh, one is that I can rewrite it in some other way and then see that the two results are the same. Um, uh, another way is to Also, why am I? Why is this here? There's no reason this should be here.
Okay, I think I'm gonna rewrite a quick version on the side to make sure that... Holy panda switches? No, 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 no. Uh, holy pandas are a bit out of my budget range. This is um, this is just a K6 uh, Keychron modded. Uh, I would say it's modded quite decently, and the switches are oh my god, what are those? They are koalas, Duroc koalas, I believe. Duroc koalas? Yeah, Duroc koalas. Uh, tactile 62 grams uh, They sound well loop Yeah, yeah, I spent a bit of time to tune them So I even bought extra stabilizers Yeah Because the one that they, uh, that comes with the keyboard is not It's not that great Yeah I haven't heard of koalas Oh, well, I mean I mean the sound is uh I mean the sound is different depending on your table, depending on your board, a bunch of things so, you know, I'm not too sure what the koalas sound like. Uh, I was into keyboard a little tiny bit before I realized how deep it could get so I stopped. <laughs> yeah. I like the key, I like the space bar though. Yeah, but I'm thinking of making a custom one sometime soon, when I have the time. So, I invest a bit of cash and then uh, get something nice. But there's absolutely no <laughs> no need. And all the customs one actually, I don't know, they most of them don't have a lot of functionality, like uh, they're not wireless, they don't have hot swap, so actually that, uh, that's very annoying I feel. Especially the wireless part. I think I'm gonna... Okay, I think I know what I wanna do.
Yeah. We have a covariance of sigma, like, covariance sigma, and then we can get the mass matrix, which is the inverse. Everything is here, it's correct. We want to maintain the same proportion, uh, that's correct, I think. Oh no, it's actually not correct. Ah, yes. Okay, I think, okay, to check, I can always... people what is happening here <laughs> as small as that number is uh, it's probably the I don't know actually no one of the highest viewership what are you guys doing as in what why you <laughs> as in uh, I mean I hope you guys are getting something out of this but this is just me working so it's probably kind of dry This is same as having your inverse inverse metric. 
uh, oh okay well I did change my tag I think it was Cheeto's um, suggestion that I uh, that is not usual to stream under the math category so I changed it to science and technology so maybe that's why you, uh, more people are seeing this I don't know I don't know if there's a way to tell who's viewing this but I don't know who you guys are so uh, uh, yeah Inverse metric at the uh, so it's inverse metric by the, the when you see leaping you mean leaping down a lost landscape leaping well, what do you mean leap like leapfrog uh, no actually no uh, so the leapfrog is an integrator so. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So, I'm not sure if you have heard of something called like the Euler's method to solve differential equations. The leapfrog integrator is uh, similar to Euler in the sense that it's trying to solve integrate uh, that it's trying to integrate a differential equation uh, numerically, and it does so using this supposed leapfrog-like idea where you interleave the update between position and velocity of uh, so this would be something like a particle so in, in short uh, the leapfrog integrator is just to solve it's just to do an integration numerically that's all it is uh, yeah it's a popular method because it's quite accurate it has some nice properties uh, it's called a symplectic integrator yeah I was compared to gradient descent with momentum uh, uh, yeah, okay, I can see what you're saying. So this line looks kind of similar, right? You have your um, current, you know, parameter minus the gradient of uh, the parameter with respect to the network and then with some learning rate. Yeah, um, I can see why, why you think that. Uh, that's a nice observation. Um, but it's not related actually, yeah. But yeah, gradient is with momentum. Yeah, yeah, it looks, yeah, it feels a little bit similar, yeah. Whoa, what the hell, there's five people, what are you guys up to? So this is me doing my um, my graduate research uh, in computational statistics. And right now I'm trying to write some stuff to make sure that my algorithm is running sanely. And uh, yeah. so this channel is just for me to be motivated to work and not laze off. So if you aspire to do the same, I recommend that you pop open your favorite editor or book or notepad and start working as well. Okay, maybe I should... like research the outputs a small description of what you're doing oh okay yeah um, yes so about that I am incredibly uh, inept at at twitching is that what it is twitch streaming twitching twitch streaming yeah I honestly don't know most things I don't even know I just found out today what a gift sub is and right now actually I still don't really understand what it is like are you I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know all of these things. I see some people. Oh, thanks for the gifts up or something. Um, I, I I don't even want to say, but I have no idea what any of those things mean. Um, you can add a command. I, I yeah, I gotta figure out how to do that. And I'll put a small text description of what you are doing. You can figure that out. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I said, um, this whole thing is mostly <laughs> just to keep me motivated. But if there's you know enough people who are interested in what I'm doing, yeah, then I'll put in more effort to make it um, you know presentable and uh, accessible to the public. Okay. Anyway, let's. Yeah, I gotta figure that out next time. Good, good tip. Thanks. Um, so I have my leapfrog update. The next thing I want to do is to check if I accept it or not, right? <clears throat> Which means I have. Oh well, that would be my Hamiltonian. Then my Hamiltonian mm, minus uh, so this is my Hamiltonian. The new one divided by the old one. Yeah, so it will be a negative, negative, negative. So it's actually my old one minus my new one, my new value. Yeah, I'm sorry if this is cryptic for those who are uh, just just tuning in. <laughs> okay. So this would be my log acceptance probability, and then the next one I need to figure out is. Well, uh, well, I, the minimum between zero and this, and then I have to exponentiate this whole factor, and then this will give me my acceptance rate. Uh, magic poop. Hello. Um, acceptance probability. Yeah. Uh, then uh, if my acceptance probability is less than well what am I doing if my random or uniform key is p0 do I need two keys yeah I need two keys it's less than my acceptance probability then I accept it which means to say that It, and then I stay where I am okay and then uh, I draw my new position so Actually, I don't really care about the update of the position, do I? Because... Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't really care actually. <clears throat> anyway, so system dot sample proposal uh, key the first the second key. And yeah, so what I need then is to why am I even keeping this? Yeah, then I need to keep all of these things. And my Hamiltonian would be... Uh, whatever... Ah, interesting, so I actually don't care about my first Hamiltonian. Oh, that's interesting. It means I can remove this part. Hmm. Let's just call it to it to keep it consistent. Except one, except one, yep. So, okay, let's just give this a quick test. Um, I don't know. I mean, it looks it looks right, but this is really interesting.
is gonna be super clunky but I'm gonna do it for now scan this I don't know huh? I feel like this not possible but well we'll just do it we'll see what happens Whew. Telling me that this doesn't work, but well, we'll see. How did I do it in the past? Oh, what? That's how I did it. Oh, actually, that that makes sense. Actually, yeah, you know what? Actually, that's. That's rather sensible. I should do that. Eh? So the first key, you split it into... Torch, uh, not much. I used it a tiny, tiny bit some years ago uh, to write some things. I think I wrote a, a variation auto encoder on basic data sets like MNIST or something. Um, but no, I haven't got too far. Yeah. PyTorch. Yeah, but I think some of the things that I'm using um, does use some kind of the same understanding as the PyTorch library in terms of uh, defining things and, and using the CUDA, something like that. So... I was wondering if I could get a performance on CPU if I port to JAX on CPU, so it's not GPU, CPU. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, some of the things in, in, in TensorFlow or PyTorch are actually using some of the things from JAX. Let me check. Ah uh, yeah, there's yeah there's apparently you know there's such things. But Jenks is a very uh, kind of general purpose way of doing things though. So if you have 
specific uses for like deep learning. I suspect PyTorch or TensorFlow probably have a better, you know, API and uh, just overall better support. Yeah, yeah. The nice thing is about Jax, really the main thing for me is that it's it's very simple to use. Not that, okay, well, I shouldn't say that, but it's easy to get started, even though there's a lot of details there. Huge transformer mobile for NLP tasks like QA and TJ and secure. Our client can't support a GPU. Oof. Our client can't support a GPU. Hmm. So I think the best thing you can do, well, okay, don't quote me on this, but uh, what you can do is to individually assign some of like basically learn how to do parallel programming using different cores so something like Jax pmap so uh, so Jax has this uh, API call that you can do called the pmap which is I guess it means parallel map and what it does is that you get to specify in fact, you have to specify the yeah this thing here. You have to specify the device in terms of like the CPU, and then you get to give it the specific task. Um, but again, I suspect that you could do something like that in PyTorch as well. I'm not so sure. Yeah, but the the tricky part I haven't tried this before. But the tricky part I I think is. Uh, you know, to really have to specify everything and make sure that they work nicely. Uh, what I'm using is, is not really in the purest sense. I'm vectorizing my code. And then the GPU takes advantage of some parameters that it can achieve. That's about it. Yeah, so something like this here. Uh, yeah, I mean if you are interested in learning Jax, I think it's a very useful tool uh, It takes a little bit to get used to it, especially when it comes to random number generation uh, So you want to be careful about that So yeah I think uh, yeah, they wrote yeah, the, so the sharp bits this part is very important. You should totally read this Well, I guess if you are familiar with writing like software and things like that it should be, it should be okay yeah, so you don't get you don't get in place up you don't get updates basically. Yeah, I heard the jump on crash. Yeah, I suspect so. Yeah, the, well, the nothing to Jax is hard. I would say because Jax is not terribly tough. There are a lot of little details that sometimes and you know, unfortunately will completely destroy what you want to do. So, uh, for example, yeah, I'll just take this example. All of bounce indexing, right? If you index something that is beyond, you know, the, the maximum index, usually you get an error, but Jax returns you something. So you might just think that it's correct, and you, you, you move on, and you get something that's garbage in, garbage out, right? Uh, random numbers is a tricky part. Yeah. So usually, I'm not sure how PyTorch works, but uh, how NumPy works at least, right, is that you set that some, some seed, and then you just say random sample or something and then it just gives you right random normal gives you another number random normal gives you another number for jacks it's very different you need to specify the key the random key if you give it the same key it's going to give you the same random number so if you want to get another random number what you have to do is two things you have to update the key first and then you pass a new key into the random number call so you have to keep on manipulating the key that's why in my code you see a lot of things like uh, how to say you see a lot of things like uh, like this like this split key because I have to take the key and then splitting is that not the same as random seed? Uh, the random seed is uh, well in, in NumPy what happens is when you set a random seed every time you use that random key it automatically uh, updates in the background right so that you get a different kind of a different seed each time but here you have to explicitly update the seed using this split function. Yeah, and if you don't do that, 
uh, I think the they have they written something quite funny. Uh, yes, this <laughs> reusing the same state will cause sadness and monotony, depriving the end user of life giving chaos. Yes. So yeah, if you see here, print random normal key. If you use the same key, oof, you're gonna get something that's terrible. So, so th those are the things you gotta pay attention to. So I wouldn't say it's hard, but if you miss that and then you write a you know a program, chances are it's not gonna uh, it's not gonna work. Or rather, worse, it's gonna give you a result that's but you don't understand it. Yeah. So it's gonna work. It's gonna run just gives you trash which is I would argue is worse I would rather it give me an error yep. wait initialization is gonna be a challenge oh oh interestingly if you wanna do neural network stuff there's things like flex there's a few very nice things written for for jacks actually even stacks I think So it's just a wrapper around jacks. So stacks is something, flex is something, and also haiku is something. Yeah, I'm not familiar with so many of them, but I used haiku before. So yeah, haiku is just uh, a small API for neural networks that uh, is based on jacks. Yeah. So I don't know what sonnet is, but if you know what sonnet is, I guess this is just sonnet for jacks. Yeah, so it's a simple neural network for JAX. Yeah. And then Stax is similar. And then Flex is also similar. <laughs> yeah, they all sound like that. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, if you're gonna deal with the networks, chances are you're gonna use some of these things. Yeah. I haven't had too much time to explore so many of these, but yeah. I know they exist. Should be useful for you. Okay. Uh. Actually, is that all I care about? How do I get this to start? No, I s oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, one, one tricky bit is that... Oh, actually I don't care about this. Dangerous, dangerous, very dangerous. I shouldn't use this. Yeah, I should use this. I should just keep two of this. Then my sampler has my track, and 
of my track is. Transition manual, mala, transition manual, mala, transition manual, so this would be manual, and then key split of key, wait, 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 wait. Uh, yeah, 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 I think this is... <gasps> Okay, um, this looks like it's ready for a short test Let us try it out and I'm sure there's gonna be errors, but that's okay because Well, because that's what we're here for
many indices for array
fair enough. This should be... Okay now, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Ah! Oh? What? Missing... Missing or required positional argument hammer? What do you mean? Isn't it here? Is it not? What? <clears throat> okay, so sales transition manual is... Ah, okay, I see. I remember now. Because there's a partial that I didn't do. Yeah. That's correct. Ah, yes. Okay, okay. No, no, it makes sense. Number is not actually random. What? Oh my god, I forgot. Freaking hell. How do. Before assignment, what really? Wait, how is that possible? What sample proposal local variable NLT one? Did I wait? A What do you mean? Local variable reference before assignment. Wait, didn't it? Whoa, 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 whoa. For key underscore keys, we do this, we do this, key zero one, and then you do this, and then you do this, and then you do this. You get here, from here. <coughs> Throw this in. 
get out the results depending on what they are then sample does it mean this didn't work? what the heck Did I write something wrong? Oh my god, LT, L! Oh my god! Oh my god, I wrote an L like a 1 and I... S this... Some class A shit. get to s some graphs what do you mean graphs do you mean like a uh, like computational graphs in the in terms of like <laughs> PyTorch and stuff or do you mean like like a uh, like search like graph algorithms I had a friend I have a friend who's studying that now oh shoot it's done Okay, so I don't know. Uh, I mean, like looking at something. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you wanna look at something? Sure. Let me let me show you something then, huh? Uh, I'm so sorry that my research <laughs> has not a lot of visuals. Okay, let's see if we can. Um, well, maybe let's move this here. Okay, so now let's see the... Um, oh wait, by the way, I gotta check something first. <coughs> the shape. Okay, so I guess if you wanna see something... If the, the, one of the problems that I'm dealing with is that because of the things are so high dimensional, and I, if I saw them, they're gonna 
blow up the storage so I could only store very low dimensional things so for example here I'm just storing the the histogram of a one dimensional data what is happening here why is it looking like this why does it look like this More importantly, I want to check. Oh no, false. Shoot, this tells me that something's wrong. Ah, I want them to be the same. What did I mess up? Oh shoot, at some point, at some point it starts to diverge, what is up with that? Wait, 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 wait. <coughs> what the hell happened here? I'm okay, my guess is that something happened with the update. So let us plot this. Yeah, what the heck? So I'm comparing two chains, and I want them. I want. I'm writing them differently, but I want to check that they give the same result so that I know that you know they were correct. Uh, and at some point, it's the same, and then phew, suddenly it goes haywire. What I can check is also this. It's extremely bizarre actually. Ah yeah, you can see this correspond to the first rejection. When I reject, then things start to behave differently. So that means there's something wrong with my rejection code. Let's take a look. Looks correct. Bizarre, 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 bizarre. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Have you heard Twitch has a new category called software and game development? Started at the beginning. Oh, I don't know. Hi, uh, C Films. I don't know what that is. Um, well, in any case, what I'm doing is closer to like a uh, algorithm, and, you know, kind of research. So I wouldn't really call myself a software developer because I'm not doing software or game developing. Also, I don't know. Uh, wait, is this a bot? Is this a bot speaking? I have no clue. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I'm good, yeah, just trying to, just trying to fix my code right now, don't really know what's wrong with it, <laughs> um, everything looks fine, but <laughs> it's wrong, jeez, ain't that a bitch, so okay, I get this, and I get that, um, I split into two, I get here and I get here. If this is correct, I return all the underscored ones. Uh, if not, I return the... Wait, blah, 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 blah. this has to do when I reject. So something is wrong when I reject it. Yes, I understand. Because I didn't update this. Yes, 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 I didn't update this. Okay. 
Okay. Um. Hmm. All right. Let 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 us give that a go. Let us actually let's change a few things. Let me do just three chains and then five thousand samples. See if that. Uh, Oh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I apologize. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying that you're a bot. I'm saying that I really don't know. Cause I sometimes I see like these very properly spelled English words. So I don't know. <laughs> it's a very body thing to do. Um, I think it fits science and tech. I'd say. Yeah, yeah. I'm working with some code. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's not exactly game development. But thanks though. Thanks. Now I know. Now I know, right? If I ever do that, it's good to know. Is it a deterministic algorithm? Um, uh, I'm not too sure what you mean by deterministic algorithm, but in short, no. Uh, ooh, yes, look at that, look at that, perfect, zero error. Oof. And then, of course, you can use all clothes to check that the difference is is true, right? Uh, or rather, that they're the same. I see Python code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Python is uh, super generic, right? You can use it to do pretty much anything. So um, I'm not a developer. I am a you know research student in statistics. So my coding skills go as far as what you see. I don't know crazy, you know, things. You can see, you know, there's less than four colors in my code. That probably means I'm not super advanced. You're supposed to have, you know, 20 colors and <laughs> a bunch of fancy things. Uh, but no, yeah. Okay, so this is good. Uh, this works. So, but this is not what I really want to use for my code. I'm just using a simple piece. <laughs> so, yeah, I still have a few things to write. Yeah. No, but that's good. It means that at least I'm doing something right. Let's let's go. Let's keep on going. Do you do you code or do you um, plots for nice plots? Yeah, so that's the thing. I don't know how to access. Okay, this is gonna sound super silly, but I don't know how to access the chat. Like I can't I can't highlight. Is it in my OBS? I don't know. I'm on OBS, but I don't know how to access my chat, so I'm just gonna type in what I see. Okay. Smithsonian Center of. Uh, right, who this? John Garrett. I am a sub millimeter array fellow. I don't know what that is. Harvard and Smithsonian Center of Astrophysics. Wow. Wow. Looks very cool. Uh, I'm Twitch Snorrit knowledge and enthusiast on movie and TV. In addition, I do web dev and database. Oh, nice, nice, very nice. Yeah. So, so I guess uh, you use a fair bit of code as well. Um, yeah, but I guess we're in some sense kind of a different end of the spectrum, where uh, I'm really just using my code to express mathematics. Uh, and not much more than that. Um, so uh, I wish I have software development skills and the database skills like you, but I don't. Or at least it can take me a while before I can get somewhere practical with it. Okay. This repo has Maploy style. Okay, what's what's new here? What's interesting? Ah, so you just use style. Oh, this is great. Oh. This is actually really great. Uh, thanks so much, Shido, because, um, you know, so like, uh, one of the papers that I'm writing, I spent a lot of time tweaking, you know, tweaking the plots, making the things, and yeah, if there's a nice library that coordinates this for uh, research purposes or technical purposes, will be super useful. Thanks. Let me let me bookmark this. You know, let me just copy this link to myself so that I put it in my own chat so that I can see it next time. Uh, 
Yes, 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 yes. I do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, SQL, Python, and addition I do, what is it? Relational database. Oh wow, that's really nice. Yeah, those sound, uh, those are very useful skills that you have there. Um, I think I myself, I've learned HTML and CSS basics like over five times in the past three years. Just I picked it up and I forget and I start over and I go, oh, okay. <laughs> then I make a stupid website with a cat picture and I forget about it. And then half a year later, I'm like, well, how do you do any of it? And I have to restart JavaScript. Yeah. So I, I use mainly Python in my work. Um, some years ago, I, I used MATLAB. Uh, I know I know I know some Java, but probably I don't remember much anymore. And I started out learning C, so I know a little bit, super little bit, basic stuff I guess. C is difficult to me, like difficult to use. You have to worry about memory, and pointers are a nightmare. I find. Or at least in exam setting, they always give you the most, the most ridiculous pointer questions. Relational database. That's cool too. I don't really know why that is, but that's cool. Uh, yeah, maybe you can drop me a link or something that I can read about what that is. Interested to learn more, but I don't know much about relational database. Uh, okay, L2MC manual. Yeah. So if I accept, once I drop back, then my sample proposal. Uh, this would no no no. Then I would have to do something like this. that's it as far as this guy goes let me see if that works um, I'm excited maybe it doesn't work <laughs> I wouldn't be too surprised if it doesn't work actually it never works nothing ever works This looks good. I don't know. This looks looks fine. Um, let's see. Don't know. Let's see. I'm curious. How much compute are you allowed? I mean, if you wanted to, you could train something like a GPT three. Um, so what I'm, I'm running, I mean this is just a, uh, how to say, I'm just forwarding a port from the university's uh, cluster. So 
I'm not running this on my CPU, I'm running this on a server GPU, which has a... I don't think it's the most powerful thing ever, but it's, it's pretty okay. A lot of, uh, not, I don't... I mean, I don't think I could change GPT-3. I don't really know how much it takes, but uh, the GPU that, uh, that the cluster has is not terribly big. And of course, there are other people using it. Uh, how much compute I allow? I mean, the max like couple of yeah, no, nothing too crazy. I probably can't train GPT three, of course. What the heck is going on? Hey, what the heck? Why, why, why? You probably have a limit. Um, wait, you when you mean limit, do you mean like the hardware limit, or do you mean like a uh, like a uh, like a uh, each user, you know, each user of the GPU will have some internally defined specified limit. In any case, the hardware limit is, is not terribly big as well, so I don't think you can train GPT-3. Wait, what's going on? That operand type for urinary... Kappa... Oh, right, because I have no Kappa here, so something's wrong. Shoot. Invalid. What? What, what, what? Oh, I can't do this? What? Have you used access? What's access? No. I'm, <laughs> I'm about to Google access, but I figure it's going to be... Uh, yeah, I don't know what is like in Microsoft Research. Each research is not a certain amount of time, and then they get cool down before they get there. Yeah, 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 something like that. Um, I mean, I'm not you know using a huge. The cluster is not some huge commercial cluster. It's just within my research group, which has a uh, maybe like five to ten people using it. So we just try to not go overboard with it, and uh, or you know when we see that there's no people using it, and then we could run something maybe like a uh, long run overnight when we know that. You know it's gonna be free but yeah I'm pretty sure uh, if you're working in a big company like Microsoft or something like that you will have uh, your own regulations right of the GPU usage Wait, what is happening here invalid PRNG key data whoa, whoa, why what's wrong Ah yes, of course, I, I realize that now. Um because this this thing is problematic. Okay. Oh no. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Yeah, that was the same error that I had just now because uh, the array specification is wrong actually. Yeah. Actually, for auto regressive, why do I need two? Can I just check again? Oh, I want to keep things consistent, that's why. Yeah, that's a bit silly. Okay, let's see if it works. Fingers crossed. wrong while tracing manual wait I'm not trying to jit it am I trying to jit it I said no jit didn't I oh right 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 whoops sorry my bad don't jit don't jit don't compile I don't know what access is I'm sorry uh, like, what is <laughs> I, I, okay? I Google access, but I know it's gonna be nothing. Oh, is it Microsoft Access? Oh, right, the database stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard of it, but I don't, I have no zero experience, don't know what it is. The most experience I've had with database is like a two hour course on SQL some years ago. That's about it. 
and then that's really just uh, I'm just learning the syntax more than anything. Oh shoot. Dot requires any area scale arguments got two ball at position zero. What? Um. Ah yes, I understand why. Because there's a true key here. Um, you know what? I'm 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 uh. I am going to. Okay, I know exactly why. Why is it wrong? Exactly what's wrong here? Exactly what's wrong here? Exactly what's wrong here? So this part where I define the manual switch here, I shouldn't do this. Really, it's not very good. Not very good of me. What I should do. Alpha One minus alpha is I think it's time I stop slacking and get back to work. Yes! Yes, Cheeto, yes! Get back to work! I am- I apologize if my work makes you not work. That is not- <laughs> that is not good. Yes. If you feel that you are slacking too much, maybe you can put yourself on Twitch as well and we can do work together. I gotten Zerg. I hate Kubernetes. I I don't know what that is. 
I see that word appear when I look at the uh, the Ubuntu stuff, but I don't really know what it is. Oh, looks <laughs> looks difficult. Okay, so it's like a management thing. Do you know MATLAB? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not a super expert in MATLAB, but oh, what is going on? Oh, sorry, my code is it's wrong. Yeah, uh, I know, I know some MATLAB. I use it quite a bit in my undergraduate, and I taught. Uh, well, I was a tutor for MATLAB. Uh, I think one or two years ago. So yeah, I remember a bit of MATLAB. Now we're good to go. Let us try that again. DevOps is just yikes. Well, um, you know, I, I wish I could uh, uh, empathize with your experience, but I don't know <laughs> DevOps. So, well, but if it if it helps DevOps, it's super relevant these days, and people are always looking for good DevOps people. So for all that trouble and pain and suffering, uh, you know, you get something out of it. I'm not sure the same can be said for research. Other than self fulfillment uh, and a deep appreciation for the subject, sometimes it's hard to see how these things uh, are, you know, translate into applications. It takes a while. Okay, let's see. If this works anyway. If it works, I'll be pretty glad. Okay, okay, okay. Good. Looks looks fine. Oh, doesn't work very well. Ah, uh, same thing, same thing. Hmm. Let's let us look at the log of it to see if I get something sensible. Hmm, so the error kind of builds. That's interesting. That is interesting. I have been development held for a month and I haven't code to anything just sucks what do you mean deployment or oh, deployment so that means oh wait sorry I can't wait but it's so crushing <laughs> yeah yeah I, I hear that I hear that I hear some of my friends who are you know some of the best students in CS in their department they cannot stand doing you know software and DevOps it's just a lot of pain because of just things that pop up, issues that pop up, deployment hell, man. So that means right now you're just dealing with getting things to work, is it? Like in terms of deployment and it's not say a new new piece of code, is that what you're saying? Wait, by the way, I don't know what the hell is going on with this thing. Huh? What's wrong?
core of log group. Sorry, let me. It means the core logic of the application is done, but to deploy it to servers take long, like get everything right. There are four automation layers. Docker create the containers, Kubernetes. I'm not even pronouncing that Kubernetes, Kubernetes, automates Docker's. Helms automates. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, that sounds like hell. Sounds like. Yeah, it sounds. Sounds pretty painful. Sounds like moving, you know, like when you gotta pack your whole room so that you can move smoothly. And you just gotta do it. You know how everything is done, but you just gotta do it. And then you realize things are missing all around. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. The ever existing uh, conflict within thyself. You need to work and you know it, but you kinda don't want to. And it's, you, you kind of know it's okay because you get it done if you have to. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay, don't listen to me. I have no authority in this. I am not, you know, not moving terribly smoothly in my own work. So, um, yes, 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 yes. But what the heck is this? Something's wrong with my code, huh? Okay, let me try this. Wait, 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 what's wrong with my code? Go. Go up for your work. Um, 50 minutes. That's a very healthy approach. I can never do 50 minutes. I I just space out after 25. Everybody on the stream. There's six people. What the heck? This is so weird. <laughs> I've never had six people observe my work, but yeah. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What is wrong? Let, let me check carefully because I feel like I feel like I'm doing something weird
something is very wrong. This means that my algorithm is wrong. They are not giving me the same result. But the issue is I don't know why, I don't know where. Okay, I guess. Okay, let's start let's start let's start looking for the issues then. So first things first, I split my key into two. Okay. Then I find my leapfrog integrator. And then I get the first step. This part is from the previous algorithm, so I'm pretty confident it's correct. And then if I accept, then I get the new ones. If I do not accept, I get the old ones uh, here. And then I need to update my, my momentum. Then it has to be my momentum update that's wrong, right? That, that has to be the case. So alpha is equivalent to exponential here. Oh. 
found the issue. Okay, but 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 I don't think that fixes everything. So now I expect the error to be much smaller, but still I don't, I don't understand why any error exists at all. It should be the same as the first case, but there's no error at all. Unless it's a numerical thing, which is extremely weird as well. I don't know. Suddenly, it, it's it's this. Um,
so at some point they differ. <laughs> oh, jeez. Why? But it looks super numerical though, like I, 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 I really don't like that, I really don't like that idea that Is that better? I don't know. It's I'm getting tired. <sighs> I need to take a break. Okay, I'll stop when I'm finished with this. Still a few days that I wanna... Yo, I think I did it. Can you do me a favor and check if the website's up and working? Uh, sure, unless it's something that's malicious. <laughs> yes. I've been watching Mr. Robot, so I'm like, ooh, careful. <laughs> hmm. This is weird. COVID on hub agonisa.ai. Okay, let me see how do I open an incognito. Okay. What is it? Ah, damn it. Well, if I'm getting hacked, then uh, this is gonna be live too. <laughs> getting hacked live. Agonisa COVID hub. Oh. Cool, okay, so this is what I see. Uh, very nice, this is AI stuff on COVID. Yes. How do I know if it's working? Can I slide this? Ooh, look at that. So, if I do few, I get to see only the top few. And if I see more, I get to see more. Filter by a bunch of things. Very nice. Can you search for Pfizer? What do you mean? Where? Here? Pfizer Inc. There's nothing at the moment, but uh, oops. There's this Pfizer Inc. and Pfizer Bio and Tech COVID nineteen vaccine. That's what I see. Should I click on one of them? This needs to be optimized. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this looks nice. Very pretty.
Hmm. Cool. Can you try like open one? All right. Nothing shows up. Oh 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 oh! Now everything is shows up. Okay. Might be my computer is slow. I don't know. My internet maybe. Uh yeah, there's a bunch of these things. This is cool. So you get. Uh, oops, I'm I'm blocking I'm blocking you, isn't it? You get this, and then all the all the thingy. Maybe yeah, a loading screen or like a uh, yeah, so that I know that yeah, because I I for for real I thought that it's not working or like there's nothing there. Oh. Very cool. Nice. Wow. This looks quite extensive. Cool. I guess my work for the day is done. Nice optimizing is not my alley view. <laughs> well, congratulations. Wait, has it been 50 minutes? No, right? I think you were working quite fast there. Congratulations, nevertheless. Job well done. It works, it works, it works, then it doesn't work. I've had, I have had similar things happen in the past and I kind of feel like in the end of the day it's a little bit due to numerics but that's such a silly thing right now. Is there a better way? I don't know. Is there a better way? So you wanna update the proportions only, right? I'm gonna try something. What if I... <clears throat> uh, no, that doesn't work. Well, no, 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 no. Try this. Now I have an integer, I don't know if it changes anything. Probably not. Well, we'll see. <coughs> I 
Ah, you know what? I can try something like that actually. This is an interesting experiment. <coughs> they are working with respect to each other hmm so it works now to the end okay let me try this it would be interesting if they, they work in this scenario but not in the other ah no they wouldn't because they have different keys that's a thing hmm. okay then what I need to do is to give them the same key can I do that? No, I can't, I can't, I can't. Yeah, there's no point in doing that. <coughs> there's no point in doing that. Of course, it's false. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, because of this refresh that's giving me an issue, let me try if there's a way to bypass it. What about I just use full? Okay, I know. What if I do this? What if I do this? I doubt this will change anything.
think I'm about to take a break before I continue again. It's getting a bit much, uh, and I don't really know what's going on. It could be numerical. It would be new. Okay, let's see. Let's see this simulation. How does this run out? I feel like it could be a bunch of things, but I don't know. difference that's wonderful but when I run into this guy I'm gonna do something fun on the work is over maybe implement transforming jacks wow that's good yeah I mean go ahead go ahead I'm sure there are some things, some people who already done, did it online, so you know if you ever need to check, it's probably there. But nice. Go for it, go for it, do something, yeah. Good luck with it too. to do things uh, it helps to learn even if you're reinventing the wheel sometimes it's totally fine it's false true and true what is happening beyond a thousand cycles suddenly it starts to diverge what the hell it's ridiculous That's not gonna be for a couple of months, but uh, yeah. Oh, the paper will be out soon, but my thesis will be a little bit long. In any case, thanks for your support. Uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, have a you know good remaining of the day. Uh, yes, good luck with the transformer. <coughs>
that's true. So spurious. I mean, that that will be a that will be a great uh, relief. But what the hell is happening here? Oh. 
hell did I do? This still doesn't explain anything.
Could be the square root function. Even though that still feels super unlikely. Freaking hell. Equations are correct though, are they? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them as far as I can tell. Okay, so let's try now we use this. What do you think about the saying publish or perish? <clears throat> um, 
it depends on the area you're in, but uh, in many cases, I think, especially in computer science and like uh, machine learning stuff, it's it's somewhat true in that publications matter a lot in terms of reputation. Yeah, if you're a student and you want to get into a good graduate school, something like that, they tend to want to look at publications. Um, well, for myself, uh, that always sounds a little bit far-fetched because, you know, um, you're, so you're expecting a 20-year-old, 21-year-old, 22-year-old who's learning the basics of computer science in the past few years to suddenly have a world-class publication. I don't know. I don't know how likely or how realistic it is. And for professors, I think in some sense that's true as well. To get tenure, meaning a real permanent job, uh, you need to be tenured. And um, that requires some publication. Uh, it's a good, good publication track record. I have you know, heard stories of professors not getting their tenureship after 10 years and then they have to leave the university. And that's kind of, uh, it's kind of harsh. Um, yeah, but the but one other thing is that n numbers are not everything. I feel in that uh, if we, even within academia, you know, not n it doesn't mean that the more you publish, the better you are. That's not what it is. Um, it depends on many things. So the the quantity itself is not the be all and end all, really. Yeah, yeah. The interestingly, the most published uh, author I know is uh, well, I'm not gonna name names, but it's someone I know from from my from my before university. I went to this thing called a polytechnic, which is like a, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a something like a pre-college uh, where they focus on technical skills. Okay, but whatever, what whatever. Um, yeah, some professors or some lecturers that publish like, you know, their citation counts go into five digits, you know, 10,000, 20,000, um, so, I don't know, yeah. It's, it's, and then there's more, there's way more than any university lecturer that I know, I don't know why. Yeah, it's always a bit, a little bit enigmatic. What is going on? I'm trying to fish out the issue here, but I can't. I, I'm. I seem to be trapped. What is happening? Oh, this playlist has been going on for quite a bit, huh? Let us go with this, maybe a different one.
be should be like this.
thousand times. Pretty sure. Yeah, I'm quite sure that at this point it is a numerical issue because if you notice, um, the precision for a 32-bit number is something like uh, to the 6 or to the 7. That means it's accurate to about 6 or 7 decimal places. And then if this error accumulates across, I'm doing some few thousand cycles, that means it will be in the order of, you know, to the negative 3 or 4, which is detectable by, by um, these different uh, measurements. So you will not get the same outcome. So what I am doing right now is to flood it by using a large value so that it always does something. Um, it, it basically flushes out the differences. <clears throat> and it seems to be giving consistent results. Um, not super sure yet. Yeah, see, not always, not always. So, oh, this is interesting. And let's try another... Another, uh, another key. This is very interesting. So you can see this is false, and after about five hundred samples, it starts to deviate. Um, but if I do this here. Was 
I supposed to do a thousand? Hey. Oh, was I supposed to do a thousand? I don't remember. N U S. Ah, yeah. Are you from N U S as well? How do you know actually, or do you recognize? <laughs> no, I'm at MIT. Cool. What do you uh, What do you do? Wait, what the heck is this? Just pushing it forward. MIT is a is a university in the U.S. in Boston. It's one of the best schools in the world for technology stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got me. What is happening here? Yeah, yeah, NUS or NTU, right. We have another university, but uh, for the most part, the more popular ones is NUS and NTU, yeah, more or less, right. Oh man, this is getting tiring. Data is no custom. Oh, so it's zero. Um, <clears throat> but what about the, the acceptance? Oh, the acceptance, shit. Huh. I'm in design and surrogate modeling using ML. Oh, nice! Um, surrogate modeling. Um, I think there's a professor in NUS called Professor Shoemaker, Christine Shoemaker, who works with surrogate models. Oh, Pierre. Oh, um, so was a physics uh, informed. Oh, I've read papers by um, what's his name? George Car Daniakis. I think he has a. Uh, Deck is right. I think he. I don't know. I've seen a lot of paper by his group about these things. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, that explains a lot. He invented them. Okay. <laughs> yes. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so I work in MCMC. Uh, not so, not precisely, you know, neural network stuff. Uh, yeah more on statistics and computational stuff. This particular example that I'm working with is applied to um, a small neural network, just a single layer MLP, just to get some posterior here. It's a prophet brown. Right, right. Yeah, George Carniadek is right, that's right. Yeah, I read his papers. It's quite, it's quite cool. I was a little bit interested in PDEs for a little bit. Um, yeah. with ML, so it just looks cool. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, the, uh, even in my own research field of uh, like, you know, 
like a MTMT sampling. Um, there are areas, sub areas where I thought like, oh, there must be something I don't understand about it because it looks like it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and then after speaking to sometimes to my professors, and uh, the conclusion is that yeah, sometimes things just don't make a lot of sense and people do it anyway. Seems like they're, 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 but it's not needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I would say, mm, you know, it depends on the situation. Machine learning or some type of algorithm learning algorithm can be quite useful, but not everything requires a deep neural network, for example, you know. They happen to work well in a lot of things that we do, but we don't really understand them all that well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, if we if we know, if we have a very good model and a ton of data uh, and have some reasonable expectations about the loss surface that we're working with, then cool, right? We can get somewhere good. But, uh, yeah, a close friend is working on robotics and he was working with reinforcement learning a little bit a while, a while back. Yeah, and he says that a lot of things are just hand-tuned, so tuning parameters. In the NML, it's like generic optimization, isn't it? Could you say it's, it is better in many cases to solve one tailored optimization problem? Could you say it is better in many cases to solve a problem in tailored optimization problem? Uh, I'm not super sure what exactly you are asking, but um, I think um, I used to think that oh ML is just uh, oh so ML is just uh, you know it's just <laughs> it's just gradient descent on steroids right that's how I used to think about it but I think that's a bit I mean that's definitely uh, an oversimplification um, but in some sense that's a little bit true but of course the you know just the sheer just the problem is so complicated and so complex the data itself is so that's it's so sophisticated and then uh, so many things that can happen so I, 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 I don't claim to know much about these things like a project I did at UPenn with a prof used the ML classifier to remove manual classification of traces which makes sense okay and that's how ML and shows the ML in itself <laughs> wait classic ML to remove manual classification of traces what does that mean what's a manual classification of traces the ML classifier to remove manual classification of traces. I don't know what it means. Manual classification of traces. What's, what do you mean by traces? Shows the ML in its surface, but its application is really useful. Uh, I'm not sure what you're saying, because you're saying it works, but then ML is just useless. Why? I mean, do you, do you, when you say ML, do you mean just, you know, generic ML, including things like I don't know, like uh, uh, SVM and everything under the sun that, con that counts as ML, or do you specifically mean like, you know, the deep learning things, deep networks? So this works now, and it didn't work just now. Traces are just images per se. So basically, instead of sitting and classifying traces for hours manual, just use an ML model to do it for you instantly. Sure, yeah, of course. Yeah, well, I mean, that is quite useful, right? What, what do you mean that it's useless? That's super useful, right? So this, it works, uh, Jesus Christ, am I going to run into, it's kind of nonsense, it's kind of boring and useless, but it will get, ah, ah, I see what you mean, um, well, I mean, I guess that completely depends on which, you know, which sub area that you're researching, I wouldn't say the whole of ML research is useless, because 
you know when people find things are useless or boring um, they do something else right so you know they explore a lot of nowadays I see a lot of theoretical frameworks being developed in ML and that's quite exciting I thought uh, using tools from I don't know like geometry optimal transport and uh, kind of continuous type of math to really tackle these types of seemingly very algorithmic problems I thought that's cool So this works for this seed and doesn't work for the other seed. So I'm guessing it's a problem of numerical issues because of here. Yeah, I think it's and I'm running 2,000, 3,000 samples. So I'm expecting. What am I expecting? So five times twenty-seven. Oh, twenty-seven times three k. Yeah, that's a large error. I'm expecting a large error. I was recently working in a subfield called RL. RL as in reinforcement learning. Um, rather than curve fitting using ML. Hmm. Do you mean representational learning or reinforcement learning? I'm assuming reinforcement learning. It's I think that's the much more popular branch these days. Reinforcement learning, right? That's cool. Oh, um, I was just saying just now that I have a close friend who was working in a bit of reinforcement learning, and actually he didn't like it that much. He felt that it was very, um, I mean, again, incredibly useful, um, but he felt the process was quite empirical. There's a lot of tuning. There's a lot of just blindly trying things. Well, not blindly, but just kind of trying things and see if they work. And uh, it's not his cup of tea. Yeah, I, I, I have trouble understanding RL. I mean, I don't do it, so I could only learn it on a more academic front. And it's always so confusing. There's a state, there's a state, then there's the action, then there's the policy. Then I'm like, I always get confused, like what? And there's the reward. I'm like, huh? So many things. That's a really good field with much more applications. Right, right. Yeah, I always get confused. You learn the policy to find the state that produce the action that maximizes the reward I'm like what <laughs> yeah <clears throat> yeah but I yeah I, I just uh, my understanding about it is, is quite theoretical in some sense I just know that it's a uh, you know basically it's Bellman equation on steroids right uh, you formulate some dynamic programming problem and then uh, when suitable you put in the big ass neural network yeah, like an ML, we use data and our race top is by small a uh, instead of marking up, which happens in ML. I see what you mean. Okay. L3. Yeah, RL is an incredibly tough problem. I mean, just the s just by reading what it's trying to do, it's ridiculous. Like, how how can you even achieve that? But it's amazing that uh, that people have done so much with it. Yeah. But it's more of an AI and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess that's very AI-ish. So the friend that I was talking about, he uh, he kind of stopped doing RL and he's now doing control instead. So control theory, yeah. model free RL, which is easier, not that great. Model free RL, right? Okay, yeah, I understand. There's many types of RL. There's yeah, there's model based, what agent based, a bunch of. Hey Chido, yeah, I was stuck here for a little bit. But I'm going off soon, yeah. I'm just I just wanna lock in to make sure the fact that I understand clearly that this is in fact a numerical issue. Because uh with different numerical settings I get different results which is super frustrating. What I can do is um what I can do is actually to reduce the numerical error I could use a bigger number, like a bigger Yeah, no, but I'm quite confident that it's a numerical issue because of the precision and the accumulation of it given the thousands of samples I'm running is actually going to come up to something significant so I shouldn't expect things to work out super well I don't know 
Okay, before I leave, then maybe let me quickly write this some write a short something up. I freaking love it so much yeah yeah for someone like myself a researcher it's great um, I know it's not ideal for you know large deployment or large software um, but for prototyping and testing code fantastic <laughs> stages of coding yeah I think my entire research is done in Jupiter yeah I mean at some point I've written slightly more extended code that you know it's that requires its own files but for the most part I run my I, I run my files on Jupiter and it works works very well works very very well no complaints Spider. Yeah, well, Spider is more of a comprehensive IDE, you know, it's like much more extensive and complicated. But I agree, um, you know, it's a little bit difficult to use. But I guess as with any of these things, you just gotta get used to it. And once you have get used to, gotten used to it, it's probably the easiest thing for you, you know. I'm pretty sure people who have not used Jupiter might be like looking at this and go, what the heck is happening?
Okay, 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 let's uh, let's keep on going. Jupiter is kind of old. What do you mean? New version is collab, I guess. Isn't it? Well, I mean, collab is the same thing as Jupiter, right? More or less. It's on a cloud. That's about it. Is there more to it? I don't know. Can, can it? Can it do more? I'm not aware. case then maybe I should do the switch I don't know seems like an easy switch seems like it That runs on cloud servers and GPU which are much more powerful. Yeah, actually I was thinking about that and something that I never truly understood. Like um Like uh, how, uh, this is gonna sound really silly, but how does it work? Because so what everyone can use as much GPU as they want from from the cloud that is not uh, that is not theirs. Best of all, it's a dark theme. Yeah, yes, I, I but I, I'm not a huge fan of dark theme Jupiter, but yeah, I know that's a coolest part. Yeah, that's cool. Hmm. Hmm. Right. But that depends on your code, isn't it? In some sense. Yeah, I know it's, uh, yeah, I, I kind of know that, but I thought that, you know, there's some limit to it that if you really want to train something really important or big, you know, it's not going to be ideal. But if it is, then I'm wrong. I 
I see, nice. Ah, uh, free version pro is much longer and cooler. Yeah, yeah. No, 12 hours is, I mean, plenty for, depending on usage. Could be a lot, could not be, maybe not enough, but for, yeah, it's more than enough for most people, I think. Okay, I gotta write something down. I gotta write my mains. Gotta write my mains down. What's the map that I'm writing down? Uh, it's here. <coughs> Usually left handers are smart low. What's that supposed to mean? You are left handed. Yeah, I'm left handed. That's cool. Thanks. Uh, usually left handers are smart. I don't know if that's true. I know we are rare. But I don't know if that's... Yeah, that means we're smart. Life is a little bit difficult as left handers sometimes. Like right now I have a fridge here. And the door opens like this, like this. So every time I open it with my left hand naturally, I open it and I can't get into it because my right hand needs to. Yeah, so it's supposed to be used by right handers. So that's kind of sad. Uh, and you'd be surprised of the silly things that happen. Um, so like bicycles. Like you don't, I don't think people know this, but bicycles, you know, there's the, there's the thing, what do you call it? Like the thing that stops it from falling, the, 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 the stand, the stand is on the right side. And because I'm left-handed, I get off on the left side and you're stuck. You get off of the wrong side of the bicycle and you can't get to the stand. You have to back, get back on the bike and then get off the other side. It's super silly. Yes. Yeah, and I can't use some scissors because they just make no sense to me. Some of the knives are also used made for right-handers when you slice them, some it's just weird. Yeah, so... Yeah, there are a few things. There are definitely a few things. Okay, really funny life. <laughs> Glad that you seek. I'm glad that you find joy in that. <laughs> Small inconveniences. I've heard of horrible things like chainsaws, um, but I've never used one. But yeah, I hear like chainsaw. Like if you mismanage it with the wrong side, it could be problematic. I think most of those are right hand based. Um, I don't know because. The door is symmetrical, right? I mean, it's anti-symmetric, right? If you go in and go out, it's, then it's different hand base, right? Isn't it? Well, so one side will be okay, right? But doors are okay, right? I mean, I've used them enough to to avoid 
I don't know, to avoid problems. Yeah. Um, well, what, what, what do I want to do again? <laughs> I don't even know what I wanted to do. Ah, uh, yes. So, this thing is supposed to be... I tried to write my left hand, I couldn't even write my name. Uh, I tried to be ambidextrous and I was training my left hand, let me tell you, it's tough. Yeah, yeah. I tried, like, you know, it's easier to write, like, kind of, like, mirror the same thing on both hands. That's not so bad, I guess you can get it's quite good with some practice. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure what ambidextrous really means. Like, is it just a mechanical thing? Like, as in, you have some control over your hand? Or could you literally write two sentences at the same time and think somehow? I don't know. That that would be impressive. I would. I think that would be impressive. Yeah. If you could write the same sentence in both hands, that's very cool as well. Um, but yeah, if you could write different things at the same time, that would be sick. That would be so sick. First equation
You have the same strength and control in writing sentences are easy are the easy part really. You have the same strength and control in both hands. I mean certainly you can't have the exact same strength and control, right? I mean that's just but I guess we've been close enough, like enough to be doing daily tasks with either hand I suppose. That's crazy, how does that work? Yeah. Right, right, okay, I, I suppose, yeah, I suppose that's the technical definition of being a bit extra. Oh, what could you, actually what can you really use it for, let me think. I guess if you're juggling, you can be quite easily switched sides. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. What do you really use it for? I guess when you type on a on a keyboard. I don't know. You can be an excellent sportsman. Yeah, you can be an excellent sportsman. I, I suppose. Yeah. Like a... I guess like basketball, things like that. And a really cool prof. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Just like... Yeah, yeah, like your classes are half an hour because they take twice as little time to write everything. You juggle, right? Uh, Sume. No, I don't. I try to. But I fail. So instead of... Being successful like a juggling clown, I just look like a clown who can't juggle. Uh, yeah, juggling is, is tough. And a really cool prop. Yeah, I guess. That's probably the... I, I figure that's probably the coolest thing. The coolest thing about being an ambidextrous is that it's a cool party trick, right? People will know you're like, oh, he's the guy who's ambidextrous. No weak sight. Football, hockey. Oh, does ambidextrous mean amb ambidextrous in the legs as well? I thought it's just hands. I guess you can be in legs as well. Like legs, I, I feel like it's easier to be ambidextrous in the legs because not so many things in life are left-legged or right-legged, right? Most of the things that's left and right is your hand, right? From a, from a physiological point of view, I don't know. Yeah, but I know like most like foot like world class football players. Uh, but oh sorry, when I say football, I mean soccer. I mean like the one where you use your foot. Cause okay, if you're in America, maybe football means the yeah the American football. I mean soccer. Yeah, I know like a lot of probably like most of the world class soccer players are equally good in both foots, or maybe not equally good, but very good in both. That's rugby. No, rugby is not the same as American football, as I've learned uh, from hearing others. Uh, but they, yeah, they look pretty much the same. They look like um, they look like people dressed up as like, you know, like yaks and running into each other. Yeah, looks super intense. Usually use legs at an equal rate. Right, yeah, it would be weird if you, <laughs> on a day to day, you don't use your legs at an equal rate. <laughs> you have twice the work on the left side. Well, I guess you could have that actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I play badminton, so I figure it'd be useful actually if you can do both sides. Your footwork can be both sides, and you are, that means you are always the fast. You don't have to switch sides because that's always slower. You don't have a backhand because everything is a forehand. That's amazing. True ambidextrous people only make up one percent. People who have no dominant hand can use both hands equally. And I'm a dominant player as well. One percent? Are you sure? That's a lot. One percent? That's a lot. Because that means every hundred, every hundred we expect one. I don't think I know a single ambidextrous person, and I'm pretty sure I know more than a hundred people. I don't know a single ambidextrous person. Not that I, not that I'm aware at least. Yeah, ambidextrous. Yeah, badminton player. Hey, that's cool. I just got a racket recently, a new one, uh, because my old one is old and uh, the string broke. 
so I decided not to revive it and uh, got another racket. But now in under COVID, I don't think they can play much sports. Yeah, those are the heydays. Yes, those are the good old days. Oh, or it could be the Momota and Exosun mixture. That sounds very impressive too. Uh. Okay, what was I? <laughs> I've been stuck here for a little bit. Uh, so this is correct, so... If it's more than one, that means... That means... This is higher. That means, yeah, okay. accept it then you have uh, here oh shoot else you yeah I think Momota and Dan Manga are cool, but Linda and Lee Chongwei were so cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely agree. They had such a, I don't know. It's like a, it's such a dramatic like rivalry. It almost seems like it's a like a, like a story from an anime or something. Even though, uh, no, I'm Malaysian by the way, so I'm a Lee Chongwei supporter. <laughs> Even though he lost, I think most of his matches to Ling Dan probably like I don't know 70% 60% uh, 
but he's such a good sportsman and he's such a nice attitude that it's always nice to support him you always kind of want him to do well and Lin Dan has that slightly you know slightly you know kind of a slightly cocky attitude which is great really like Naruto and Sasuke um, I don't watch that <laughs> but I I assume that you are correct I know who those people are I know Naruto is the orange color one and Sasuke is the dark blue color one I don't know actually but yeah that's a great rivalry I hope Momota and Victor will have some I'm pretty sure they will they will build towards that right you know they're just gonna meet a bunch in the next I don't know at least at least in the next what five or six years at the very least they're gonna meet each other a bunch and um, just clash each time and you get to see wonderful badminton watch anime Momota is also growing old no I don't watch any oh I, I mean I watch a little bit of a, a couple of anime before not a not a diehard fan I really like some of the ones that I watched though I saw I mean it was years ago I saw like Hyoka I like uh, like Nichijo and something those very silly the slice of life stuff I find them hilarious um, what's the one about high school kids Danshi Kokose? <laughs> Some of the dumbest thing I've seen. It's amazing. I love it. Momota is getting old. Yeah. It's a little bit disappointing that he didn't do super well in this Olympics. Um, I hope he doesn't deteriorate because he's such a beast. Those are really cool. High School Boys 1. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 yeah the, the, whole, the whole anime was only, I think, 10, 12, 15 episodes. Each episode is just like 15 minutes or 12 or something like that just about high school kids doing just the dumbest possible things you can think of and it's um, really high quality comedy I would say uh, here okay I think I'm done <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. Danshi Kokose. Oh, Mala. Da da da. I am pretty happy that I got this done. I thought I wouldn't have the energy to do it because today is a uh, pretty, pretty chill day. I wanted to take it chill. But I managed to push myself to do a little bit. Planning for postdoc later on. Ooh, very sensitive topic. Um, I don't know, to be completely honest. Uh, right now, as is, I'm already struggling with my PhD. And um, I feel like it's honestly quite difficult to make it in academia. And... Um, so I, I don't know if I have what it takes. I would love to give it a shot. Maybe I'll, I mean I'll try for sure. Try to apply to some places, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you know if other opportunities come up in areas outside of academia that might be more suited for um, you know for myself. So I don't know. It's everything is in the cards. I just have to try. I feel sad what I've heard postdocs is easier than PhD. Um, that's what I heard as well. Well, I mean easy is a tricky thing, right? Because what do you mean easy because you don't you know there's you know you just do your research right um, but I figure the competition to get a good postdoc is not so trivial if you want to work with top people you probably have to have to be the cream of the crop yourself so there isn't much pressure yeah yeah you just can't do whatever you want uh, I thought that was pretty cool um, even though for myself I know myself and I know that that's not a very great thing because I tend to be incredibly inconsistent with my productivity so <laughs> we'll see how it goes yeah I mean of course yeah because I mean right now I'm you know fighting to get to get a PhD right to, to finish my education finally and a postdoc um, you don't have that same stress or pressure right of course the pressure is to get a job as a prof right to to find a faculty position I think that's a different type of different type of stress Like I'm planning to do a PhD and postdoc together under. Wait, sorry, I couldn't read. Uh, like I'm planning to do a PhD and postdoc together under the same guide. I'm still a second year, so it might change as I reach fifth year. Like people at MIT usually join Facebook, and Google after a PhD, right? Uh, so also you mean like you might find a postdoc position uh in MIT as well? Is that what you're saying? Facebook, Google after a PhD. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I, I guess it completely depends on... It depends on so, it depends on mostly what you want to do and the people you want to work with, right? If you have a... If you have a good group that, you know... That is good for you and your work, that's fine. Um, I guess if you explore outwards, you have, you know, some benefit of, um, I guess, diversity and exploration, but... You know, I guess you gotta weigh weigh that yourself. Uh, yeah, I mean MIT is a you know it's a perfectly fine school. Don't don't worry about that. <laughs> um, Facebook, Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that's kind of the the dream, right? You know, become a highly paid, you know, Fang researcher, right? That's the the dream. But I don't know. I'm always a little bit skeptical and a bit pessimistic for myself you know I feel like so many people are so so talented and so 
massively skilled so to fight all of that to get that oh uh, feels like a really tough challenge for me i don't know projects are really fun here to do yeah i bet i bet yeah i bet yeah Uh, and Google a PhD degree for IT is not needed. People do PhD to be in academia. Uh, is that actually true? Because I understand that some of the research position, like a, a ML engineer or something, in in those Facebook, Google, they do require a PhD, or they very much prefer uh, a PhD holder. Of course, I'm not saying that you should do a PhD to do that. Um, that would be, I mean, I don't know. That that's that's also valid i guess but there's a slightly more demand in a uh, graduate education uh, these days than the past i feel to be in academia yeah yeah but i think i also read somewhere that st uh, the stats is that people who have a phd or, or uh, don't always stay in academia and the percentage that stay is quite low something like what 10 percent 15 percent i don't know if that means like people stop wanting to join academia or that it's too difficult that they cannot remain I don't know could be both I mean probably both right a bit of both PhD meaning has changed over there ah I see okay I see what you mean yeah yeah okay right 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 Mm, yeah. Who's your uh, or which group do you work in? Reinforcement learning, right? Yeah. my people who are interested in research and not money yeah yeah I mean no doubt the the main driver of all this you know typically is there's some type of just you know like innate passion involved but that's always easier if you know knowing that there's some uh, some stable career ahead And I consider myself quite lucky, so that I'm doing research in this area that happens to be rather relevant in in today's, uh, I guess, today's economy. I already got selected yet yeah, to choose a group. Oh, nice! Congratulations! Wow, sick. That's great. That's great. I guess I'm in Mackie. Okay. Sure, yeah. Nice. Very, very nice. It's an achievement to get into such a good school and uh, be accepted. So, I don't know. You should be quite proud of yourself, you know. I'm pretty sure, like, people, you know, who are in the good schools don't feel like they, you know, they're ah, well, everyone's good. Well, yeah, that's true. But if you take a step back and take a look, um, you know, it's not a trivial accomplishment. So, you did well. Hmm. I'm in Indian, so here I had to work my ass off, lol. Uh, wait, where are you now? So, um, so we, so you're saying you'll be going to MIT, or are you in MIT now? What's Yeah, several of my um, group mates in my current research group are from India, and um, yeah, from what I hear, the the competition is insane. It's it's insane. Like I think it's harder to get into IITs than MIT, like the good IITs. Just the just the sheer competition is ridiculous. 
So I have a lot of respect for those people who do the hustle. It's like, sheesh, can't imagine. Ridiculous. That's great, that's great man, that's great. Yeah, I'm interested to, uh, do, do you have a, yeah, you know about IITs? Yeah, I mean, I've heard a lot about them. Um, I know that there's, I mean, first of all, I was an engineering undergrad, uh, so whenever my professor sucks, uh, IIT lecturers, or, well, maybe not IIT specifically, but a lot of lectures from um, Indian universities and are fantastic. So they, I think they taught me <laughs> like a quarter of my engineering degree. <laughs> They're really good. So and yeah, and I do know a little bit about IIT. Oh, nice. That's that's good. Yeah. What's the best one? I've heard about it. I don't remember. I'm not in matters, but is it Madras? I don't know. Yeah, the exam is tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Incredibly high standards. All the IITs are in the same level, like the profs are keep on transferring. Oh, I see. I see. So it's mostly... So so what is it? Is it mostly location-based? You know, like do people go for the MIT, uh, the IIT close, closer to them? Or, or do they... Or is it more like uh, they offer different selection of courses and then you go for the ones that has what you want? Do you have a website or something like a personal website? You know, maybe I could. Uh, so getting into any IIT is good. Yeah, yeah, I I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. It's not easy either. I hear it's uh, very competitive. It's not about the data. No, it's about the data of opening. The data of opening? Oh, like how many s vacancies there are? How many openings? Like student like spots for the students? Is that what you're saying? of opening oh ah so it's intake i see old iits are good as a con good connection with people ah i'm sure yeah yeah i'm sure I'm yet to make a profile on any social media figure I'll make one and reach there. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah. 
No, I don't mean social media necessarily. I mean like a. Oh no no no! I don't mean social media. I mean like a. You know, like if you have an academic uh, web page or things like that, it would be helpful. You know, to get your. You know, just to do a bit of uh, publicizing yourself and put your work out there. But of course, actually, yeah, you you have not started yet. So yeah, you have a lot of time. Uh, yeah, no, no rush, no rush. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's that's. I've only I have like only three papers on the way, dude. That's more than me. I'm I'm almost finishing my PhD and I don't have three papers. <laughs> well, that might be quite, quite bad. Uh, well, maybe it is, but I guess the standard to, usually you know you try to graduate with like a couple like two or three, um, yeah, we try to get the good ones though you know, like you're right. Uh, it, I've seen some really, you know, sloppy papers and sloppy works and uh, I don't know, sometimes I don't think those are, I don't think that's very meaningful. But who am I to, to judge really? Uh, wait, what am I doing here? Ah, uh, yes. Wait a second, what is happening? But it's good that uh, if you if you're an undergrad and you read so many papers, that's good. Uh. I was lucky I had a chance to work with a uh, UPenn, MIT, Georgia Tech as an intern. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. Keep it up. You'll be fine. Yeah, it's really good that um, it, uh, if you have so much uh, drive and you start early and you get a lot of things done, um, that's good. Yeah, it means you you spend less time picking things up from scratch. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Actually, I realized yeah. You know, even though COVID is a, you know, complete, just a horrible thing that happened to the world, but you know, there are some tiny bit of good that come out of it. You know, some so for for example, for example, like undergraduates like yourself, you now can attend academic conferences that you couldn't before, right? Now it's online. You can attend a lot of the time for free. Yeah, in the past, what well, you're not gonna fly, you know, to to listen to a professor talk about things that you probably don't understand. But now it's actually very nice, and you get to interact with a lot of people. 
So in terms of academia, especially what you do and what I do, things that can be done on computers, um, there's actually a slightly better infrastructure built for people to connect. Covid is really horrible. We we'll suffer a lot, but like me. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of how life works, right? Yeah. How how is the situation in India for Covid? I'm not following the news particularly on that. You know, I hope I hope your family is okay at least. pretty average like still higher hmm so what's the strategy here I mean uh, are we waiting for herd immunity is that what it is or or is it or is the system just too exhausted and you know I don't know that's great yeah everyone's doing great that's great yeah okay so this code actually works surprisingly so I say surprisingly because usually the first time doesn't work, but this time it works on the first try. So super suspicious. <laughs> I don't know, probably wrong. Uh, let me check a few things. Oh, 94%. Let's try like this. It will take some time for herd immunity. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you have a, uh, yeah, you have a big chunk of the entire population on your side. Yeah, it's gonna take a bit of time. Unfortunately. case my code works perfectly the first time then it never works again <laughs> yeah. that's worse right oh <laughs> uh, yeah but yes coding woes I can never reproduce the same results yeah yeah i mean yeah I, I i start to realize in my grad studies that if you want to reproduce your results you know it requires sometimes for you to code things a little bit differently you know to keep track of a few things to make sure that you're using the same seed you know that type of stuff and um yeah it's not trivial it's not trivial at all like the other day i was testing out my code and the reason it didn't work, or rather it worked differently, was because I was using a 64-bit number and a 32-bit number, and that changes everything. I was like, what the heck? How? How does it even... <sighs> that was such a disappointing... That was such a disappointing result that I spent hours and hours debugging, and I realized it's just because I was using a different configuration. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Look at this, look at this. Now it works, you know. Now I get the same result that agrees with each other, and you can see all the error is kind of low. This is ten to the negative four, but if I run it again, if I run it again, I don't know if it's gonna work again. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm pretty sure at this point it's a numerical issue, so I'm, I'm okay. I'm confident. Oh, it works now! Great, great. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep working. But I'm not, you know, but this is just 1,000 samples. If I scale it up to like 5,000 samples, I'm pretty sure it's going to break. Because there's just too much time to accumulate. You see, now it's false. Why? Because the error deviates. Yeah. Run everything at once. Especially MLS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one thing tricky about Jupiter is that you sometimes might run your cells in different order and then you mess things up. Which is why I also try to always restart my kernel every once in a while just to make sure that everything is correct. Um, okay, well, thanks for accompanying me in on this work. It may it has made things much more interesting, and I hope you 
I don't know if you learned anything from this. I hope so, but probably not. Um, but anyway, thanks for your time. Uh, I got a lot out of this. Thanks, thanks to you guys. So I'm about to go to have dinner before my food place close. And uh, yeah, I will be streaming probably a couple more times this week uh, as, you know, to the end of the year, I'll be busy with my research. So thanks for tuning in and uh, take care of yourself and uh, see you guys again. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's great to talk to research students. We, yeah, I don't think we talk enough as in research people don't talk enough, I feel. So it's good. Yeah. All right. Thanks.